It's like their Adam's apple. But what is yeah, it but it, it looks like a looks like a ball sack. What is it? It's called a bell. For real? A moose bell. Wow. Yeah. And what is it? Uh, what's the purpose of it? To keep their balls warm and, and close. There, there, there's a lot of cold up there, yeah. so so they can just go like that, and on a real cold day, they can flip their nuts into their mouth and keep them warm. It does always make me... It does always make me... Hang on. I, need, I need, definitely need a laugh. Cause, and that laugh was just to cover up my queef. Um, is that the name of your next special? It is, Cover Up My Queef. Hey guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Today is a special episode. It's a Harlan Williams Adam Ray crossover episode from the Harlan Highway, Harlan's podcast. We had a great time, so decided to throw it up on the ALN page. Enjoy it. Follow Harlan's pod. Follow Harlan on the gram and Twitter at Harlan Williams. Follow me at Adam Ray Comedy. Tour dates this week, and I'll be in Boston, August 5th and 6th at Laugh Boston. Tickets at AdamRayComedy.com. August 7th in New Hampshire at the Music Hall in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Heard of it? Me neither. But we're going. First show sold out. Second show has some tickets left. AdamRayComedy.com. The Music Hall in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. August 12th and 13th, home in Seattle at Laugh's Comedy Club for four shows there. And then... uh, and then uh, North Carolina, Kansas City, Arizona, all at AdamRayComedy.com. And then we start shooting season three of Young Rock. Uh, of course, check out my YouTube specials live at San Fran, live at Madison. Um, da, 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 I think that's it. Yep. Thanks for coming to La Jolla Comedy Store. Everyone that came, shows were great. Love you guys. Subscribe to the podcast, rate it on iTunes, five-star rating, and tell your friends, tell your family, and get your merch at adamraycomedy.com, and see you on the road. Enjoy this special episode with Harlan Williams. Hey, it's Herbert. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Here we go. Oh, yeah. We are here on the Harland Highway, the only highway you need to uh, know about. The only highway where the hedges are being trimmed right outside. Yeah. Can you hear it? Oh, yeah. I can hear a chainsaw and a leaf blower and I think a hair dryer. I don't panic until I hear someone screaming. Yeah, right. Boy, hair dryer, chainsaw. Hair, hair dryer, leaf, leaf blower. Leaf blower and chainsaw. Now, if you were playing a video game and you had to choose one of those as your main weapon, what would you go with first? I like anything with the word blow in it, so I'd go leaf blower <laughs> all, all the way. Let's go through the, the top five best compound words with blow in it. Ready? Okay. We already opened with leaf blower. Leaf blower. I'll go next. Um, blow torch. Blow torch. I'm a uh, sucker for a good torch. Yeah, and a good blow. And you know what the best is? What? If you're really into this. There's a category on Pornhub where you can get torched by a blowtorch while getting a blowjob. Whoa. Number three. How much does that cost, you think? Two fifty. Two fifty an hour. <laughs> okay, so we have three. Yeah. Torch, job, and uh blower. Okay, Deep so blower. so the other blow I would go to defer to is uh, not a lot of people know this. Please. But uh, you, you've heard of Steve Jobs, obviously. Sure. So his younger brother. The Big Mac. Yeah, his, his younger brother, his uh, name is Blow. <laughs> so Blow Jobs. Yeah. Uh, Can you imagine being in Steve Jobs' shadows, A, and your first name is Blow? Blow, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like teasing. And now, it, what did he get teased more for? Yeah. More, more. Mofo? <laughs> okay, playa, whatever. Wow. Guy goes urban on my ass in the middle of a Steve Blowjobs. I, I got inspired by this face, man. Uh, okay, what... Uh, What's the fifth one? No, wait, what does is, what is Blowjobs get teased more for? Mo- <laughs> oh, dude, what's... A, player, player wants to play. Player, play. Play. player got to... What does he get teased more for? Uh, <laughs> his speech impediments? <laughs> God. Or Hello, that. DeVry. Yeah, we've got that Johnny Dyslexia on <laughs> Channel 12 over here. It's not even on a phone. He's on a TV. Channel 12. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what does he get teased more for? Does he get teased No, for? you can't do it. Now no. you got to say, what does he get teased, teased mofo? mofo. <laughs> yeah, I'm not letting... You've gone too is, far. Wait, 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 now i got to lean into it. Yeah. What does he get teased mofo? Um, yeah. His lack of production in the technological world. Right. Like, because of, like, his family's like, your brother made, made the iPad. Made yeah. the iPod. What are you doing? Yeah. Just walking around, being a... Just being named after human suck offs and he's like well I he's like well I uh I did make a toaster last week that can also play music and they're like get the fuck out of here I don't think they say get the fuck out I think they go that blows because that's his name and that stings even harder that stings all right so blow job, job. we got uh, blow jobs the guy leaf blow, blower blow, blow jobs job, the act blow, and blow, blow torch. torch what's what the running? last one can, do you, do you want to say it or do I it's your show why don't I th- toss up the initials Great. and see if you grab it and then it's like we do it together like we're a couple of blowers holding hands. <laughs> uh, B-H. Bathhouse. No, that doesn't have the word blow in it. Oh. Blow. 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 Can I give you a hint? Yeah. Blowhole. Hey, oh. All right. Circle gets a square. Circle gets a blow. Wow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Adam Ray, in case you're wondering <laughs> who the Wonderlust over here is. Johnny Wonderlust. Look at this guy. Adam Ray, comedian, actor, buddy, uh, model, uh, inventor of the uh, coconut cream pie. Thank you. Thank you. We just came out with uh, two new sizes, extra oh. large and fatty supreme. Wow. <laughs> fatty supreme. Yeah. We're not beating around the bush. Wow. And if you show your bush, you get 50 cents off. Wow. Yeah. What, just what America off. needs. More like big. Gluttonous items. Yeah. I once went to a KFC. My buddy and I got real baked. We got hired for 250 bucks off Craigslist to perform at someone's rehearsal dinner. Their wedding. A wedding, okay. So they go, we've saw some of your uh, YouTube clips. Will you come write a song for us and per- and do stand-up and songs at our rehearsal dinner? A real roll of the dice. We are not even, we don't, we're very green in the comedy world. We don't have yeah. our legs at all yet. This was when you were just starting. I just graduated college okay. in 2005. What college? Just because people always want to know. University of Southern California, fight on Trojans. Now people are probably going, whoa, that's an expensive college to go to. It was. I just finished paying off my loans three years ago. My single mom got financial aid and some uh, uh, financial uh, assistance uh, for my GPA and from being a Jew. Uh, if you don't believe me, I'll post a circumcised photo on my Instagram at Adam Ray comedy or circumcision.com or Harland highway.com. Um, all three of those have my uh, penis on them. So there is, um, <laughs> boy, are you sure you didn't get a degree in communications? Cause that answer did not shut the fuck off. I mean, that thing kept rolling like a dildo down the side of Brokeback mountain. Oh, it just Surprise, bounced. They left that shot in, by the way. They did? Yeah. Oh, really? It's like the Starbucks cup in the back of Game of Thrones. Oh, right. Like, people were like, was that dildo rolling down the was side of the road a... supposed to be there? Right. But Gyllenhaal was a was an EP, and he had final cuts. So. Oh, wow. Final cut, <laughs> he says, just after a circumcision <laughs> joke. Unreal. <laughs> Unbelievable. blow. <laughs> so, we perform at this thing. Take a sip break. Yes. And we and we go up to KFC. We get just stoned out of our minds. And we go, let's take our 250 and go to KFC. 250 bucks. And blow it all on KFC. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah. You bought $250 worth of Kentucky Fried <laughs> yeah. Chicken. Yeah. Come on. I swear to God. We his uh, roommate at the time was having people over. And so we were like, let's roll up to the like Shindig, the Friday night party. Yeah. With $250 for the KFC. We know they're going to be stoned and drunk. We're stoned. We were laughing so hard because they probably made nine trips through the drive through window. And yeah. The last trip, and this is the whole point of the story, two buckets of soda. We said, give us your largest sodas. Yeah. They had handles on them, and it was a bucket of soda. And we started laughing so hard, and then the driver was just like, you guys are so baked. And I go, what gave it away, the big drinks? She goes, yeah, that or the nine trips I've made to the window to give you more food. Yeah. So fucking stoners. Dude, what you probably don't realize is that KFC doesn't have that much chicken, no. and they probably sent one of the workers to go out in the back and hit a few squirrels over the head with a spatula. That's what that was. And those last, like, <laughs> long pieces of chicken with the tail. 
Yeah, that was uh, that wasn't that KFC wasn't a breast. Original. No, that wasn't a breast. That was it wasn't a. Clip. It was a rodent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. That's why we. That's probably why she threw in extra sauces to try to dilute the taste because she didn't want us to know. Dude, I did that once, and I'm not trying to name drop, but it's it, it's funny to the story. There was a time when I worked over at DreamWorks Animation oh, yeah. Studio. Oh yeah. And I don't know why, but some for some reason they put my office. I was developing an animated movie. They put my office three down from Jeffrey Katzenberg. Ooh. So I'd wake up in the I'd, I'd show up in the morning, and you know Jeffrey and I was like, "Hey, morning, Jeffrey." You know, and he's like, "Hey, how you doing?" Like it was the most bizarre thing. And as I got to know Jeffrey, Christmas came around, and I thought I gotta get a I gotta get a a, a present from my boss, sure. but I don't want to seem like a suck up, so I'll get something fun. And through our conversations, he he had mentioned that for some reason he loved Jack in the Box, you know the the fast food like oh, Burger yeah. Chain, yeah. And he has kids, and I guess they loved it. And I thought, okay, as a as a goof. I'll go to Jack in the Box and get him like like three hundred dollar gift certificate, great. you know. So I By do. It's a great gift. It also is right? like funny. It's thoughtful. Yeah. And it's also not going too big. To yeah. He's like easy man. I'm oh, married. Hang on. I hear the, the the is that a leaf blower, a hair dryer, <laughs> or the most painful blow job <laughs> on planet Earth. <laughs> From Edward Scissorhands. Wow. <laughs> now talk about a circumcision. Can you know, <laughs> That guy could do like 12 kids at once. He could do a kindergarten. <laughs> Just be in and out, dude. Meat flaps flying everywhere like pork rinds. How about a drive through circumcision? Oh, wow. And you don't even have to completely come to a stop. Is it the same thing if you ask for a supersize? <laughs> I guess if you got a, if you're a baby with a big honker, God, imagine you're a baby and your honker's bigger than you. Yeah. Do you think the rabbi gets like intimidated or like uh, offended that or or jealous that he like cuts a little? He does a weird thing, almost like if a. Uh, what's a good analogy here? I don't know if uh, you don't. Uh, it's like someone comes in to get a tattoo and they're a little rude and the guy's yeah. like, you know, he wants, he, he fudges something on the uh, inscription yeah. or the uh, subscription. Subscription, yeah. <laughs> you know, he does something funky yeah. with the tattoo. Yeah. Like if the rabbi saw a baby with a huge, uh, huge wing, would he, yeah. would he be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to do a little something uh, fun on this one because I don't like you coming in here with this big dick baby energy. Yeah, yeah. Kind of taking control of the room or the synagogue. Is, do you think rabbis get... Uh, get jealous if a baby's got a huge wiener and this I, is for this is for everyone in the room this is for everyone especially the men <laughs> but uh yeah i i think they would get jealous and and my dad was a bit of a prankster and mm. th they left uh, just a mess with our priest we didn't do it with a rabbi we did it with a priest which is like a jewish yeah priest yes priest rabbi we left my umbilical umbil umbilical cord attached for the first uh four months so it was about this long and and he, we had it trailing out of the diaper, and he thought I had like a giraffe wiener, you know. And he he cut about three feet off, but he couldn't get it all. No, you know I was skipping on the way out of the church. You had a personal jump rope. I certainly did. But anyway, so so I go to I go, I pull up to the drive through. Yeah. Okay. So you I, went to buy it at the live. I did it at the drive through. Yeah. I go. Can I get a three hundred dollar gift certificate? They did it. That's not a normal purchase. Right. It's not. I get home. That in an hour later, my credit card's been canceled. <laughs> so I, I phone, I go, what's going on? They go, Mr. Williams, somebody just spent $300 a Jack in the box. I go, that was me. And the, no, nobody does that. Nobody eats that much Jack. I go, it was a gift certificate. So I thought that was funny. Oh, my yeah. God. Well, good to know that the credit card company is looking out for you. But also, yeah, now, now think about the guy that does that, and there's no fraud intersection yeah. and they just go no we know that you're definitely doing that fatty right it's like they made a food judgment yeah like yeah. like they they were like that food's not good enough for someone to spend three hundred dollars <laughs> now if this also it's not safe <laughs> the food's only not so many squirrel clits you can eat mr squirrel uh, what now clits i it was that kfc that's serving those up remember you said that half of my case yeah was i didn't know that squirrels had clits though oh you need to google more stuff Squirrel clit is what you're saying. They're also opening at Coachella next year. Oh, it's a band too. Yeah. yeah. 
Speaking of weird names, have you ever had a, a nickname? Adam Ray, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, let me let me hit some applause and some some. Adam Ray, comedian, uh, stand-up comedian, friend, buddy, uh, actor. You're doing a lot of acting now. We'll Is get it, we'll get into that. We'll get but into it, I, I want to ask you: Have you ever had a, a nickname? Did you have a nickname growing yes. up? What? Growing up, when I was a uh, a chubba love, I had nicknames uh, such as. Um, Jello Jiggler. <laughs> this is pre-pudding pops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jello Jiggler. Yeah, and um, and uh, I remember the first kid that called me that. I went ugh, 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 back to him. Yeah, and he didn't find it funny. Yeah. And I was like, all right. I was trying to fight fire with fire. I was trying to dilute some of the severity of the insult. Yeah. Um, Wait, before we get, were you a, a, I was a big, big? I was probably. I think what I, I remembered. I want to say one. I want to say one seventy. Three or four in fifth grade. So you would have been about 11? Yeah. That's big. That is big, yeah. And what I, was the nickname again? Uh, Jello Jiggler was probably JG. Uh, okay. Or uh, Penis and Tits Kid uh, was was another one that was... No, that was that was one that I... You gave I, yourself. I gave myself to yeah. kind of get ahead of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, wow. You anyway. caused yourself childhood trauma <laughs> to get ahead of it. So Smart. Yeah. The classic, just Ray. There were three Adams in my sixth grade class. Yeah. So Ray was was what a lot of people call me, um, and then uh, and then Ray from the Ghostbusters was popular. So then people would go, "Who are you gonna call?" And I was like, "I don't know, man. I don't have a cell phone. I don't know where this bit's going." And then um, Whoa. I'd get a Ray. That was what I got in college, was just A-Ray. A-Ray's kind of cool. It's cool, but I've never referred to myself as that. In college- I like A-Ray. It is cool. It's almost like A-Rod or J-Lo or, um, you know- It sounds like a cool brand of sunglasses, too. Yeah. You go get your A-Rays. It's going to be, uh, going to be, there's a solar eclipse today. <laughs> get yeah, the yeah. A-Rays on, player. Yeah. We've got them in all shapes and sizes, even for the- Yeah. Uh, Would I be allowed to give you, like, a nickname? Please. Uh, it's open season. And you can give me one after, but if I, I'll go first. How about uh, Flunder Bunch McGlundelbunk? Does that do anything for you or we no? Need a, we don't even need a follow up. That's perfect. It works. Yep. Because I've also, I've also, um, you know, I've been very envious of the Flunder Bunch family. <laughs> yeah. For decades. Yeah. So just to be mentioned in the same sentence. Oh, is, uh, good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> bundle, Flunder Bunch Bundle Gunks. It makes me think of the. Original Honey Bunches of Oats oh. before they got it right. Yeah. They were like, what if we call it Flundle Bunch Grundle? What was it? Grundle Crunch? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> it's very, out. it's a very hard <laughs> and difficult linguistic yeah. nickname. And I never, I should have just gone with something <laughs> short and easy. The best nicknames are, uh, are tough to remember. Yeah. Okay. You got Let one me for it. me? Sure. Sure. How about, uh, so we remember Captain. Captain Crunch. Yeah, yeah. One of the most famous captains. Of course. He was you know. the theater of war, you know, shock and on, Iraq and Iran. And sure. Vietnam. Argu arguably one of the most famous captains. Yeah. In Vietnam, people don't remember that he was over there fighting yeah. the, uh, the Crunchberry War. Yeah. And uh, so we're going Captain Crunch, and you've got, you've got a, uh, you know, just your overall aura and energy is, uh, is commanding. You've got a presence on stage, on and off. You're always looking to salute at the wrong times, right? When you jump into a pool, you've always got a fun catchphrase locked and loaded, right? You've got quips and trips and slips and clits just ready at the whim for any squirrel family reunion. Yeah. So I'd say we're going Captain Queef. Captain Queef. Yeah, because I think Queef is, when Wait. I think of Harlan Williams, I think of fun. I think of lightheartedness. I think of joy. I think of uh, uh, airy <laughs> farts. <laughs> Harry farts? What the hell? This might be the worst nickname ever. Wait, just so people know, what is a queef? So a queef. Some uh, people don't know this term. I'm not even sure I know what a queef and by is. By the way, parents, this is when you want to take your hands off the kids' ears. A queef yeah. uh, from Webster's Dictionary is yeah. defined as a... Uh, uh, a fart, uh, not from the butt, but from the other place uh, down there, where uh, where where sex is uh, is the the preferred uh, region 
for penetration. It's a woman. That's Webster's Dictionary. That's not mine. It's a woman fart. It's a woman fart. I guess that would be. Wow. I guess that would be the better way to say it. It's a woman fart, not from the butt. So I'm Captain Queef. Can we? Does that? Do you know what it sounds like at all? Just so I can kind of. I appreciate you asking because yeah. uh, I and I knew you were going to ask me that. Yeah. So yeah, I've prepared a couple options for okay, that. Okay. So because of course every captain wants a theme song, a right? Buh, 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 some sort of yeah. harmonious celebratory. When you enter the room, what do they play? Well, yeah. They play. Uh, they play the Queef <laughs> noise yeah. Yeah. for Captain Queef. So here's a couple different okay. options for you. Um. <sighs> What's that one? Yeah. Okay, I just thought maybe you were getting ready to do it no, and no, you were no, exhaling, was, but that was the first queef. It's got an exhale quality. Okay, it. but I did hear a little like like little, the lips flapping. flapping. Yeah. Okay. Here's another one. Oh, wow. Uh, and your third option uh, is, uh, is probably the one that most people go with. Yeah. And it's the most recognizable. <laughs> Dude, that sounded like if I was at a Red Roof Inn in Bakersfield and Jabba the Hutt was through the drywall making love to Chewbacca, I think that's what that was. That was no queef. That was Star Wex, Star Wars perversion. Star Wex, Star, Wex, Star Wars. Motel Six yeah. pervert sex. If you <laughs> like, dude. Now, is it actual Chewbacca or a guy dressed as Chewbacca? Probably a guy, a truck driver dressed as Chewbacca. It's yeah, gotta be a truck driver. Yeah, I always. just, I just uh, was talking to a, a guy on Instagram. No way. Who uh, drives trucks and was, you know, thanking me for the. The, the comedy uh, yeah. that we provide. Truck for drivers long- love podcasts, don't Novel. they? Yeah. Um, speaking of the Harlan Highway, think about all the highways, the Harlan Highway right. is getting listened to on. Yeah. Um, and so I started asking him, you know, what trucks he drives, how long. I mean, man, what a job. I, yeah. I don't know if you ever, when you, you know, are on the road and you pass by a truck, whether it's filled with cars or bread or, you know, butt plugs or whatever, whatever they're trying to get, you know, to Rancho Cucamonga by 5 p.m. Right, right. I'm always like, where's that guy been and where's yeah. he headed and when is he going to get there? Yeah. And based on this guy telling me, he's like, oh, I'll drive sometimes. You know, it'll. I think he said there was like a, uh, I want to say you can't drive two days, more than two days straight, but he's like pushed it sometimes, pounding Red Bulls, whatever, and gone like four days with like a couple stops. Whoa. A couple power naps. Yeah. Oof. And so I've heard some of these guys, and I don't want to badmouth truck no. drivers, but this is something I've heard. I yeah. can't verify. I heard sometimes they take little pills oh, or yeah. speed to oh, yeah. keep them like riveted Alert at the wheel. Awake. Because I think Is that for real? Oh, yeah. And I think there's also incentive, uh, you know, to get to where they're going quicker, probably. I'm sure there's little, right. you know, bumps here and there uh, in, in the uh, in the pay uh, world. Yeah. Mark Saratella, shout out to Mark Saratella. He has a great joke where he goes, I just read this new stat that American truck drivers uh, are uh, 40, uh, uh, 78% of American truck drivers are on crystal meth, which means 72% of American truck drivers are giving 110%. <laughs> Pretty good joke. Yeah, it's Mark Saratella. Nice, nice. Yeah, that that that's not an easy job. Not a job I don't think you could pay me enough to do. Yeah, and people don't... You know, I'll be honest. When I was a kid, when I was going to high school, yeah. I that actually... D- one of my dreams was to be a truck driver because much like comedy, which is what we do, stand-up comedy, once you leave that office with your rig, you really got no boss. Mm. You're rolling down the road. You're going through cities. You're going through beautiful mountains. You're going through prairies. You see, see wildlife. You stop When you want to stop for a burger, or you want to stop for a milkshake or fries, you stop. If yeah. you want to pull over and watch a moose walk across a river, like the, the, to me, there was a real enchantment mm. to being a truck driver. Sure. And, and I always loved the prospect when I was a kid being in school where everything was so orderly and you had to study English and math and this and that. I thought, I don't have to know any of this stuff to drive a truck. Yeah. And I'm just out there on the road and I can roll the window down. Like there was a real, um, I really romanticized to the point where I'm not even kidding. When I was in grade, like grade 10 and 11, I would dress like a truck driver because I, I literally thought it's what I was going to segue into. I wore a down vest 
like one of those down, like, like, like ski vests. Yeah. I had, a, I had like a trucker hat. I wore work boots. And, and sometimes I'd be at school thinking I outsmarted everyone. I was like, yeah, I failed the biology test. What do they know? I'm going to be hauling turnips <laughs> down Route 73 one day, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like this was going through my head. Wow. Yeah, because I, I just, I, I was one of these guys who couldn't fathom the concept of being under someone's thumb and having a boss. And I thought, what, what freer thing is it? But now that I'm older, like you said, these guys have to be at a certain destination at a certain time. Yeah. I'm sure the faster they get there, the more moolah they get. Maybe yeah. their, their, uh, their produce has got an expiration date. So it's not as easy as it seems. But when I was a kid and just thought all you do is drive around, I was like enchanted with it. There is a freedom to being on the road. And, yeah. And you're right that the uh, the travel aspect for a comedian is, is uh, there is a, um, you know, a, a, um, like you said, a, a being enchanted by it. it. Yeah. It feels very like there's so much to absorb. And the lack of structure, I think, that you uh, enter into that, that, uh, that is the opposite of what school is providing. I like how you said being under th- someone's thumb. Yeah. You just reminded me of this kid I went to elementary school with, uh, Dustin Brody. He was like the school bully. Oh, he yeah. He used to kill insects by pressing his thumb on them. Really? Yeah. It's a weird way to do it. And then one day he pressed one on like a like a bee and got stung, and that was the end of that? Or? I hope so. No, he was pretty resilient. I mean, he would do this guy could take a lot. He this was, guy was a real insect killer. He was the guy that would yell back at the teacher and even like ruffle their feathers a bit, right? <sighs> Like if Mrs. Uh, Watkins was like, Dustin, you know, you know, stop pulling your pants all the way down to take a pee in the bathroom. We're, right. We're hearing rumors about it. Yeah. And he would go, up yours, Mrs. Watkins. Whoa. And she'd go, oh, God. That seems like she got aroused. <laughs> like that, that's almost a shot, borderline almost queefed. <laughs> like you were right on the edge of a Captain Queef, I thought. <laughs> Hey, shut up. I'm trying to sleep. I've been hauling onions all day. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> but did you ever, as a, as a stand-up comedian, yeah. was that ever a consideration for you? Like, what uh, you know, obviously Driving we love comedy. Traveling. No, just like the concept of of having a career oh, yeah. and, and a professional life where you weren't, you, you had a lot of freedom. You could kind of wake yes. up late. You could yes. work at night. You 1, could 000. see the see the country, see the world yes. perhaps. Yes, there were classes I even, uh, it's why I love just, you know, uh, drama and, and, and acting school because it just felt, um, A, it just felt fun and just the, uh, the, the, the ability to like play around still. And, and there's still... I don't know, even with acting, it's like, you know, you're getting taught certain, you know, ways to do things. And yeah. here's an approach and here's something to think about. But never, ever like, this is what you have to do. Yeah, Everyone's right. Everyone's coming in. I remember Jason Alexander, uh, George from Seinfeld, came in and guest professed my uh, uh, senior year at SC. Wow. And, or sophomore year. And yeah. he gave a scene study class. And I remember him teaching certain ways of like, you know, of having thoughts before each joke. And really like just every joke has, you have a thought and like, a purpose of why you're saying it, how you're saying it. Yeah. And it was really calculated. And so, you're, and you're looking at a guy like, I mean, he seems like a guy to probably trust, but he would say some stuff. And I remember one kid, you know, didn't do it the the kind of way he was suggesting. Right. And he kind of called out Jason Alexander and he was like, I don't really want to do it that way. And I remember Jason Alexander being like, yeah, what the fuck do I know? I was just on the best show of all time. Whoa. I was like, oof. Yeah. Captain Queef <laughs> rides again. Right to the gullet. Wow. Well, one of the things I really loved when I when I started entertaining the concept of of going into the entertainment industry, I always had this fantasy because, you know, we, we grew up watching movies where, you know, it was a war movie in Vietnam or it was a, the Jungle Queen in Africa yeah. or it was, it was uh, you know, something in New York. And so I always had this wonderful concept that as an actor – if I was able to make a career of it, you know, a few times a year, I'd get to go to some exotic location in the world and shoot them um, um, for seven weeks. I'm in Hawaii. And yeah. then, I mean, you just did a whole project where you got to shoot in Australia yeah. for like two months. Would never, I don't know when I would go there. If I yeah. And this was the second time I got to go there. And Amazing. It's, yeah. And, uh, like the, you literally just already interrupt the other side of the world. You yeah. got to go because of acting. And that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Suddenly you're in this place that you might never 
even considered going. I do love that about it. And the yeah. time when I uh, opened for you, I mean, some of the places we got to go to and would vent. You also have to have a, a thirst and a zest to venture out. Yeah. And see. Yeah. And even, and I think there's a a lot to uh, to chalk up to even going to a mall in a city, which we, you know, when we were in Minnesota and had the Mall of America right yeah. there, that was a great place to fart around. But like, even going to the little town centers and going to a movie, there's a lot to to gather of a place yeah. just from that experience. Cause yeah. you're getting all walks of life. It's like the airport or anywhere else where you're a movie theater. You're getting people from all, uh, shape, uh, shapes and sh- shapes and sizes <laughs> and just coming into the theater to, to swallow their popcorn and choke on their soda. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, and, um, <laughs> one of my favorite places I went to, I never thought I would go to is yeah. Alaska. 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 All, I've all, never all, been by the way. I've been all over the world, never been to Alaska. Captain Queef's never been to Alaska. I've never queefed all over a grizzly bear. I've never queefed (laughs) queefed on the ice caps. I've never held up a halibut and queefed on its flat, (laughs) stupid face where its eyes are on the top of its stupid head. Why not just be born a pancake? Why you got to pretend you're alive and live at the bottom of the cold ocean? Please continue, Alaska. (laughs) Son of a! I should queef on you right now. <laughs> I was about to this inter- close. I was about this to interject when you go. I've never queefed, on, held up a halibut, and queefed on its head. I was about to go. You will. <laughs> you will. Who's that? I will. Uh, Alaska feels like a place Harlan Williams ha- would have frequented many a time. I know because I'm a nature guy. You are, and yeah. it is. Oh man, dude, we should book a gig and go up there together. Is there? Do they do comedy yes. there? There's a What's there? Places. Well, the, the place I went to was about. We might be coming up on 10 years ago, which was, I was only about five years in. But okay. It was, a, it was awesome. It was called Chilkut Charlie's. And it was. Say a, that again now? Chilk. I don't know if you can still say this. Don't cancel me. Chilkut Carly's. Also the Chilk, name of Chilk, a young Eskimo boy I Chilk, know. <laughs> Chukatali, yeah. Great caribou skinner. I mean, yeah. this guy will got a caribou. And, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Blow. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're at you're at Chill, Chill, Chill Cook Charlie's, or as we say here in uh, the rest of the uh, lower fifty two, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> it's the Eskimo the Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> They don't have a rat. They have a walrus. Hi, kids. Come here and let me stick my touch through your fucking face. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know where the anger comes from. <laughs> I queefed. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Uh, Continue. I'm having my you next son of a party whore. in Alaskan Chuck E. Cheese. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Come for the pizza, stay for the walrus queef. Yeah. Uh, so. By the way, there's a there's a new Chuck E. Cheese in in Florida <laughs> called Fuck on Your Knees, and it's a it's a more of an adult Chuck E. Cheese, but you might want to try Fuck on Your Knees too. It, a, the mascot isn't a rat; it's a priest. But whatever you want, keep going, Alaska. So you're you're in Alaska, and what <laughs> happened, kid? I'm in Alaska. <clears throat> oh man, I met Joe. I met I met the Eskimos uh, boys' uh, circumcision, and uh, and I'm getting ready to do stand up. Yeah, and this is a bar that apparently has been there for like. 70 years. Oh, so it wasn't an actual comedy club. So no, no, they, now, just so you know, comedy people, Adam and I have been doing this a long time. There's gigs where you go to a club and it's a brick and mortar club. It's the improv or it's the laugh factory. And then you get places, they say, oh, come to our comedy club. And you get there and it's not a comedy club. It's a my big fat Greek wedding yeah. banquet hall, sure. or it's a it's a beer. It, and this sounds like it's one of those yes, where it's a bar where they've turned a they've made a Oof. makeshift stage and sound system. The it worst. I'll be honest. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Good. Okay. But when I saw it, I go oof. But they, you did you did mm. what now? What's that? You you did what? You said oof. <laughs> what did I, what did I say? Well, you said uh, you said I'd blah 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 blah, and I said oof, <laughs> and I'm just wondering was, was that technically a queef? Because it's your either you got kicked in the stomach by a football player just now that I didn't see, or you fucking queef, daddy. Is it oof a queef? I think it's uh, it even sounded like, and I don't know if this is a brand, but it sounded like a sandpaper queef. It was a little itchy, came out a little itchy, guy. You got some robotism? I will in a minute. <laughs> What? Here, let me. Here. No, I don't, I don't take Tussin from under the table. Here's some Vaseline. Oh How about that? Oh my God. Yeah. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> P. 
pure petroleum jelly. That's what she said. Now, yeah. I was in Chilcot Charlie's. They yeah. got, uh, I think there's 10 different bars in this bar. Here's the appeal. Oh, place. God. They've been for 70 years. So they have a room where there was like a massive earthquake in like 1964. And one of the rooms got like tilted and was like underground. And that bar is cool. Like, they call it like the bird room. They've got a bunch of like dead birds in it wait it's got, underground by accident yes it like it stayed like it survived the earthquake and it's got like this where you walk in and then it's just lower and on a tilt and nobody from the city <laughs> said maybe we should shut this underground <laughs> tilted disaster waiting to happen down no they said let's add more marinara and let's fucking put in a comedy club. They do things a little bit different up there in Alaska now, <laughs> boys and girls. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, their mayor is a moose. And so, um, what, and some laughter. And so there's... Oh, uh, hold on. I can give you some laughter. <laughs> okay, it's him. I just... I'm not that crush. I have a little button. If you, ha- if you have your cans on, you can oh, hear. You just can... got a huge laugh, dude. Do you want some, some applause, too? Sure. Here, let me... See. You just got, like, everyone's cheering. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Yeah, it's my first time in Alaska, and boy, it's true what they say. The ketchup tastes a little different up here. And the mayor's a moose. And suck my queef. How about a hand for that? <laughs> okay. So I did, I did make a joke about, because they shoot mooses up there. Mises? Moose? They shoot the moose. Mice. I think they, shoot, they, mice. Shoot, they shoot mice. And I go, boy, you guys really just uh, got it uh, going on for these guys that I don't know what they've done to you. What, do they challenge you to a staring contest and now you want to end their life? Dead silent. And then afterwards, the guy's like, yeah, you might want to take it easy with them moose jokes. Uh, this isn't how really? it's at all. But again, I'm yeah. going along with your... They were actually moose sensitive. Dynasty, moose sensitive, which is a thing now. Hashtag moose sensitive. <laughs> yeah. And so they're up there. Wow. The guy's like, you better watch your damn moose jokes. Whoa, dude. People, people up here in Alaska, dude, we like to kill mooses. It's how we make our food. It's how we make our chicken. Yeah. Okay, when KFC runs out of chicken, we replace it with moose yes, tenders. Sure. You dip it in moose sauce. You go down there to the strip club. You ask for Mrs. Moose. She comes out wearing a fucking hump. And she dry humps your hump. Wow. <laughs> it's just all sorts of moose-related activities. Yeah, you the stepped point, on a landmine. The point being, they are highly revered creatures. And yeah. to be killed they're like don't you talk about us what we do with our mooses is our what happens in alaska stays in our mooses fucking you know you know bro i'm not into hunting i don't like hunting well, it's cruel right. making fun of but, it i was like but, what are you doing to these guys but with a moose oh, i mean come on when, when you're an animal where your nut bag is hanging from your throat sure and not between your back legs when you have the audacity to dangle your hairy moose balls from your throat Get ready to hit that lap button. Oh, the lap button. Here we go. Uh, you might you might need a bullet between the eyes. <laughs> Wait, when when your shadow is teabagging you. You might be a redneck. You <laughs> might be a moose neck right there. Do you know what that's called, by the way? That big that big sack. That, Teabag throat? That, that's probably what it is in the, the city. The original TBT? But in, in real life, do you know what that... The, the, the male <laughs> moose has a big dangling thing, yeah. hairy... Do you know what it's called? It's like their Adam's apple. But what is yeah, it but it, it looks like a it looks like a ball sack. What is it? It's called a bell. For real? A moose bell. Wow. Yeah. And what is it? Uh, what's the purpose of it? To k- keep their balls warm and and close. There, there's a lot of cold up there, yeah. so so they can just go like that, and on a real cold day, they can flip their nuts into their mouth and keep them warm. It does always make me. <laughs> it does always make me. <laughs> Hang on, I need, I need definitely need a laugh, cause, and that laugh was just to cover up my queef. Um, is that the name of your next special? It is. Cover up my queen. Hey guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. And I'm sitting down because I got some big news. Usually I'm standing up to do comedy, but I'm sitting down now because I got the deal of a lifetime. First of all, sitting is bad for you. We all know that. Whether we're sitting on planes or sitting on a beanbag chair watching porn in front of our kids, there's just too much damage you do on the body. Thankfully, Axion has come up with a chair that allows your pelvis to move the way it does while you walk. So all 33 vertebrae align into perfect posture. The result, better breathing, better blood flow, and relief from the pain. It's crazy what you can do when you set your body to do it. Now, these guys are homies of mine. My buddy Dennis uh, worked with the Clippers as their doctor for 27 years. He runs a wellness center called Peak Wellness. He's a fucking gangster and has uh, saved me from surgery numerous times. Uh, I actually met Justin Bieber at his place, um, and uh, and I was in my boxers getting cupping done, and Bieber and I locked eyes, and I was like, this is how we were supposed to meet, and Bieber smiled, and I never saw him again. 
Um, but uh, this chair is a game changer. It's changed the way I live. It's changed the way I breathe, the way I sit. And you guys right now can get that chair for 25% off uh, using the promo code ALN25 at all33.com. Go to all33.com and use promo code ALN25 for 25% off this chair. It's incredible. You got to get it. It's the only chair out there to get. We will be getting them for the studio, but don't take my word for it. Check out this video. At All 33, we've always pushed to reimagine the way we work. That's why we designed our revolutionary sit-in-motion technology to help people perform and feel their best. Then all of a sudden, the whole world was free to rethink how we work and especially where we work. And as Americans came home, so did we. We approached the design of our chairs with a person and planet first mindset. That's why we chose to build them here in the United States. Manufacturing in the U.S. means we're able to have eyes on every step of the process. From material sourcing, to part production, to testing, even shipping. And we're able to recycle materials, use less energy, and reduce our carbon footprint. We've built the healthiest chairs you will ever sit in to keep you and the world moving. Because movement makes things happen. There is something really uh, awesome about creatures that end up at, like, a moose. Like, who decided that it would start or be created or exist in Alaska, right? I feel like that's right. probably the origin location. Like, okay, I'm, moose, I'll, like, I'll, say, I'll, I'll go with that. Like a moose, like, it didn't start in Africa, right? There's Why none in Africa. Like, it's a creature that can um, tolerate the, the chilly temperatures. And Extreme have, cold. And is built to be able to, like you said... You know, throw like that little cup you try to the ball you try to flip into the cup. Yeah, it does that with his balls into its mouth? Like yeah, you said to keep his uh, his nuts warm. Yeah, just he's, he's designed to be around cold temperatures. Yeah, saying. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would so the fact that it didn't end up in uh, Africa is crazy that that just worked out like that. I don't well, know. Well, you know what's weird, and I get your theory, and it it make perfect sense. But then you you cut to the camel. Which is almost as maybe could be bigger than a moose for all I know. Some of those camels are gigantic. Enormous. They've got just as much thick hair, yeah. but they've been engineered to live without water. But not not permanently. But they can go a long amount of time without water. But that still doesn't delineate the fact that they have all this fur and they've got this massive frame and they're they're walking around in sand dunes that yeah. are you know 120. The the air's burning. But yet, so it's weird. I wonder if a camel, I think I know the answer to this actually, because I grew up in Toronto and at the Toronto Zoo, they had camels and I, they would put them out in the winter. So I guess a camel can tolerate mm. cold, but I see what you're saying. It's yeah. funny how each animal has its place. Would a camel prefer, if given the opportunity, to take a one-way ticket to some uh, chillier, you know, tundras? Yeah, Probably. I think it would. Fuck. If it could get like like business class and oh, stretch yeah. its hump out, get camels a uh, a little bit of a you know hoity toity traveler, bit of a prima donna. Yeah. I mean, when you can uh, when you can drink water from your own uh, ass flap, <laughs> I mean, you you deserve a little special. You treatment. don't have to pay for cocktails. Is that yeah. what you're saying? <laughs> By the way, hang on, hold I'm, on. We need a laugh. We need a laugh. I <laughs> would, would pay top dollar. To see you teach uh, a just at a zoo, by the way. Yeah, here's a great movie for you, Har. Okay, here we I go. I don't know what I I don't know the premise yet. But yeah, it opens on you because I was just at the San Diego Zoo a month ago. Okay, and the San Diego Zoo has just really done a wonderful job adding in house entertainment. The animals are like an afterthought now. What? There was a cover band up there. Oh, no. It was awful. There was a oh, woman no. that like, you know the Lion King Broadway show? They have like people that have like, you know, they've got a thing where they can operate like a, a, a not a rooster, a buck, there was a rooster in the fucking Serengeti, a, 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 a peacock or a, a, a rhinoceros. Yeah. A woman with like a rhinoceros. But the woman who was wearing the rhino outfit. Yeah. 
you know, she had like the rhino hat like this, and then she had the rhino, oh, the, the hips, the rhino hips. Yeah. So when she walked, it looked like a rhino. But the woman who was manipulating the rhino puppet, I'm sorry, but you gotta pick. Some, you have to have to either have someone with like a ski mask on, yeah, so that you're lo- not looking at the person, or yeah. pick someone who wasn't running, f- who didn't just win the biggest gums in America. No, she. Couldn't stop smiling, and her gums couldn't stop oh. trying to escape her jaw. Oh. It was the biggest mouth gum combo I've ever <sighs> seen since I went to Bubba Gum Shrimp. Wow. And I had that Bubble Gum Festival. Yeah. It was just, and oh. so I wouldn't even look at the rhino. Yeah. I'm just looking at this woman who's pretending to be a rhino. So that's, yeah. now it's just doubly sad. Oh, uh, nothing worse than giant gums. <laughs> yeah. And, and your dress is a rhino. So we're just like, yeah. we started hypothesizing. We're like, God, what if like, she met a Tinder date and that guy, she goes, meet me at the zoo. And he goes, yeah. I love that. And he shows up and he's like texting her, where are you? And then he looks up and sees her dancing around as the rhino. Oh. What do you think he does? Do you think he just texts her like, hey, I couldn't find you or something came up? Or does he, if that initial moment happens and he sees her, hey, Bethany, oh. Daniel. He's like, you work here. Wow. I do. Or you might be in a scenario because a lot of lonely, desperate perverts He's are got on a rhino Tinder. Finish. He sees a rhino and he goes, holy shit, she's already horny. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, Isn't that funny? That's why I do comedy. That's why I do wow. it. Yeah, that's why. Really? I was going to be a truck driver, but I do that. <laughs> Can I be honest? No. <laughs> yes. Yes, be honest. As much as you just, that'll be a fart in the wind on this podcast. Yeah. It, 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 there is something to be said about everything you've done up until this point prepared you to be able to hear my shitty with no ending zoo Tinder date, big gum dressed up as a rhino story. Right. You buttoned it. You listen. Yeah. This should be a lesson to anyone out there who's thinking about comedy. Ooh, or is in here comedy. we go. Here the we go. The importance of listening mm-hmm. and acting comedy. You and I both do crowd work. Yeah. I studied from the best. Well, I mean, a thousand percent. When I started doing it, Har, I think I've said yeah. this before, but I was watching you when I first hosted uh, for you at Laughs in Kirkland. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and you were just so brilliant, still are. And I go, when did you start doing it? Because I want to... You, oh, crowd so, work, you mean? It so fun. And I'll oh, never yeah. forget it. You told me, you go, I was... And unless your answer's changed or I made this up, yeah. I was on pills the whole weekend. But you go, uh, uh, you go, I was always afraid to do it. Yeah, it was it was it was it was like a thing that I was scared to do. So I started, and there's some version of this answer. You said I started doing it to kind of like conquer that fear, but because every time I would start doing it, I was just not comfortable, and I wanted to get comfortable with it. Yeah, that that's that's part of it, okay. and and the other part was I was terrified to do it when I started doing stand up, yes. and that's the part you're remembering. But before I even got on stage for the first time and did actual professional stand up. In my head, I said to myself, I want to be able to just do crowd work. I want, to be, I want to be able to test myself, see how funny I can be without any pre-planned material. Can I walk out and walk into a room full of strangers and make them laugh just as much? And so I always knew I wanted to do it. And, and it was scary getting there because... You know, when you're doing crowd work, as you know, you you got no net. You're on a, you you got nothing. You don't even have a tightrope. You're just, you have zero, and you go. And everyone's here. We go. For you to fuck up. I mean, yeah, they're just anticipating you're not gonna be funny. It's right. Yeah, and, and you have to. You're you're controlling the moment, the room. Everyone's just. I mean, literally, and it's a timing thing. You yeah. Also, can't. You know what I found is like like I just said to piggyback on it, the listening thing and gaining and gathering information yeah. so that you can really, but. It takes a minute to get comfortable to trust yourself to, A, build a moment. Mm-hmm. Sit in silence is the biggest thing. Yeah. I still am always trying to, and you have just a, such a uh, you know, great pace and, and the way that you just kind of take your time. I'm still always trying to implement. But, oh, thank but, uh, you, man. But crowd work, I think, allows you to settle into that. That's oh, yeah. Try to take what, I, what happens with the crowd work and put it into my actual uh, act because you can't rush things. And you, ha- yeah. you do have split seconds to say or not say split something. seconds or give a, an yeah. extra beat on something or something happens and everyone erupts and then you're like what am i going to come right back in with that's yeah. going to like 
take it up. And with. doesn't it make it so exciting? Like it, oh, that as a, as a comedian, it makes it so exciting because it's almost like you're purposely throwing yourself into the fire. You yeah. know, you know, it could go south any second, but you're making the conscious decision. Go, okay, I'm going to go at it with the crowd in real time, no material prepared, and just boom. And and for me, it it, it creates adrenaline and excitement, yes. and and it doesn't always work, but sometimes it works amazing. Yes. I did one recently. You've probably seen it. I, I posted it on, but sometimes you get ones that you just love, and they happen just like that. And I think you've seen this one. I put it on Instagram, but. I said to a lady, I go, what do you do, ma'am? And she goes, oh, I'm a hostess. And right away, I just went, oh, a Twinkie or a Ding Dong. <laughs> and it just, like, even as I w- was saying it, I went, how did I even, how did that happen? It was so fun, and you knew the crowd, but it happened in, in less than a blink of an eye. And, and, and when you get those nuggets, they're, they're just the best. And by you the know? way, you got the laugh you got because you fired right back. If you Immediately. had taken a beat and thought, yeah. everyone would have been like, well, I could have thought of that. Right. Like, that's just enough time to go like, they think of it before you do. Yeah, and that's right. And it's not as powerful. That's right, yeah. You came in with it before they could even think of it. And that's why I'm boasting about that one because it, it almost, it's almost as, if, as we're talking right now, there was not even a millisecond. It was like that's she awesome. said hostess and I said Twinkie or a Ding Dong. Yeah. And, and, and when that happens, honestly, in my head, I kind of take a beat afterwards. I go, thank you, God. Like, totally. How did I, yep. how did, like, it's like, those are like little gifts. Yes. And, and that's what makes it fun for me. Now, that being said, sometimes you do a line and it's like completely the room just, <laughs> it's like dragging an anchor over a coral yeah. reef. It's a night, but, but so that's why that. I like the great ones yes. so much because when they hit, it's such a payoff. Well, I think so. That horny joke was great. And you in a zoo, A, you already just love animals. Yeah. And Force of nature, force or forces of nature. Your special force of nature. Force of yeah. nature. We can get on Amazon right now. Harlan's Ooh. great special that Thank you. he did out in the desert with uh, some uh, just some creatures of the world. Yeah, you know, like five to ten creatures. Well, what happened audience. is I, I did it. I did force of nature up on a hill in the in the desert with no audience, and we took a tortoise. We took an actual right. tortoise and let it walk around while I was doing my act. Yeah, yeah. But while I was doing my act, a couple of wild dogs. The, the, apparently, the deserts. I, I read up on it. I in Palmdale mm. and uh, out out in the uh, the desert uh, north of Los Angeles, there's there's a l- tons of of um, wild dogs. People leave there. I've seen whole packs of dogs running around out there, like wow. sixteen at a time. Wow. Like they're actually a thing. And so while I was doing my my sat up on this hill in the middle of nowhere, two wild dogs just wandered up and wandered through, and I was talking to them, and it, it was beautiful. I loved it. Yeah, it's a great special, and it Thank you. just furthers your, um, you know, relationship with animals. And so you in a zoo, yeah, I feel like the way you were describing the camel that drinks water out of its ass flap. <laughs> yeah, I just like they have people in the zoo in different stations. Oh, okay. That are, um, that are giving like mini, not tutorials, but just like they're they're fat givers. They're just uh, standing on a podium in little spots around the zoo with a mic, and like in front of the reptile station. And you yeah. just walk by and you hear just passing sound bites of like, nah, nah, nah. and that's when the boa constrictor learned how to comb, you know. And then you're like, well, that didn't feel like the uh, thing to say at two in the afternoon. Then you walk back by, you know, nah, 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 nah. and that's how the tiger got its name, uh, uh, you know. Just, just, Stacey. just so I'm clear, and people don't think we had a little sound blip or anything. The the boa constrictor came. Oh, you need to go to the San Diego Zoo and book a ticket to the reptile <laughs> sex house. Yeah. Okay. Great. I can't wait to see an iguana and a fucking beaded <laughs> lizard in a sixty nine position eating fucking Yahoo out of a fucking Seven Eleven milk jug bottle or whatever. I don't even know what I just said. <laughs> Queef. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you as a zoo, not a zookeeper. We've seen that movie. Yeah. You and working the zoo, like you're one of the fat givers. You're one of the offhand employees. Right, right, not, right. And it's not even like a Dr. Doolittle movie, although yeah. you'd be great in one of those, but it's, it just takes pl- the backdrop of you, almost like the way in, um, what's the movie? Uh, Role Models with uh, Sean William Scott and Paul Rudd. Yeah, yeah. They're like, um, they give, they're like motivational speakers for kids. No, they they, uh, they work for that, uh, like a monster energy type thing. Yeah. And they go around to schools trying to pitch the product and be like, yeah. get the, whatever. 
the zoo is just our uh, launching pad. For, yeah. This is the guy that, this is what he does. And then it's, maybe you meet the girl there too, and then yeah. she sees you doing it. and bounces. You know what's interesting? Because you hit the nail on the head. I, I love the zoo. I love the environment. I love animals. And, and, and an incarnation of what you're saying sort of drifted around in my head yeah. back in the 90s. Like, it, it wasn't specific in any way, but I thought, God, I... I really love animals, and I, I actually developed a movie that someone else ended up kind of doing. I don't know Oof. if it was stolen from sure. me or what. But in the zoo world... Um, um, George of the Jungle? I was offered that movie, actually. That's Shit. another story. But, um, but uh, no, this was a movie uh, called Zookeeper yep. by Kevin James. Yes. They ended up doing a movie. Remember, they did yes. a movie called, I yes. think it's called Zookeeper, yes. where he is that kind of comedy guy at a zoo. Yeah. And I never, I think I saw a part of the movie and it didn't really work. And mm. it's not a knock on Kevin. It's just some movies yeah. kick ass yep. and some, that that Those one kind of. But, but uh, I, I was a little bummed because, as you said, that is such a rich environment. And to throw in an animal nerd or some kind of guy and stuff just starts going wacky at a zoo. But uh, somehow, whatever they did with Zookeeper didn't really make it. But uh, well, I think there's a kid version of that yeah. story. But I think the more adult comedy yeah. that's Edna. almost even a rom com of you yeah. being there because I don't know. Idea. I, I got very. I had flashbacks to when I worked at Albertsons, the grocery store, and the cast of characters that are that help to fill out that uh, setting. Yeah, I just in a five minute span, I saw eight different jobs from. So 17 different types of people that was like that in a place where everyone has been to or uh, is going to go to. So it's like you have this relatable, you know, uh, location. And yeah. I just the, you know, same with the grocery store. There's just like an endless amount of I feel like you could also do the way that mall rats was one of my favorite. Movies. Oh, yeah. Everything yeah. at the mall. I Great. love those movies yeah. where we don't leave that spot. Yeah. And you literally or Adventureland, like with the theme park. Yeah. Um, even though I think they, they bounced out a few times. But I like movies like that where you could. I got to do a American movie Summer like in the zoo. Let's how about. OK, that? there you go. Yeah, I got to do a movie like that with with Dane Cook and uh, Jessica Simpson. Employee of the Great. Month where we shot almost the entire movie inside of Costco. It was a Costco you shot it at? Yeah, it was a Costco That's in so uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and oh. it was it was it was a blast. I, but I know what you mean. It, th those are neat, neat environments with such specific quirky people with specific jobs, and it's it's not just the jobs; it's the egos that go with the yes. jobs. It's the personalities. Yes. It's the it's the status. It's the pecking order, and uh, it's a fun examination. It's kind of like a microcosm of of the whole human society under a roof, yeah. you know. And the comedy really, you're resting on the cast and the uh, you know the characters that you are providing for this movie because yeah, if you only have this one spot and you can't go anywhere, it's like all right, let's a hilarious scene in front of the the service deli with the gal giving the kid potato salad that she gave a weird hand job to and now we won't text her back am i speaking dude, from personal dude. experience maybe i don't know what we're talking about do you have you had to put <laughs> potato salad and hand job together why why you got to do that to me i got this is my life i got a lot of years to live i did not need that imagery now just ruin your barbecue you ruined a lot of things you're a long list of things you ruined potato salad, picnics, the deli counter at Ralph's, my dad when I shower him, and your sister's forehead. And I don't know why, but you did. Um, now, speaking of queef, if I can go back to it, there's another word that sounds like, like queef, and it's called fushlang. Oh, and at this point of the show, we have a little, a little treat, a little insert. You know, earlier, you were, what was that rap thing you were doing? You were saying mo 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 mofo or what, yeah. what were you saying? I was trying to say more for more. Uh, but you're saying mofo yeah, or something, morpho, some yeah. rap thing. And, and you wouldn't look at Adam or I and go, these guys can rap. But here's where you're wrong, because right after you queef, another sound comes out and it's for slang. And I would like to present to you right now that uh, me and Adam did an episode of a show called for slang that I kind of made up. And if you want to see some hot rap, uh, should do you want to throw to the clip right yeah. now? So this is uh, filmed uh, in Bellevue, Washington, outside the 
uh, Parlor Live Comedy Club, RIP, where Harlan and I were performing. And uh, about 30 minutes from where I grew up, about 28 minutes from where uh, I got that potato salad handy, and about 42 minutes away from my ferret, uh, from where my <laughs> from where my parents split up. I almost said my ferrets from where my ferret parents split up. Yeah, <laughs> I was raised by ferrets. Let's cut to the clip. It's obvious. <laughs> Here it is, Adam and I for schlang. <laughs> Hey peeps, what's up? It's uh, Harlan Williams here, and I'm on uh, I'm on the set for another amazing stunt on Fischlang. I mean, it's a this one's gonna be like this one's gonna be like the total eclipse of the heart, like thunder pop. Uh, today we're doing a stunt that's crazy. I'm here with my sidekick on Fischlang. This is Adam Ray right here. Scorch the beef and grind the meat. And today we're doing something and you can't do it at home, peeps, pl players. I don't know if you know what this is, but this is a ping pong paddle. And uh, today we're doing something off a of slang we, we ain't never nuns done. We're doing a song and it's gonna be called the ping pong song. Right, player? Scorch the beef. Well, now you said it twice. The ping pong song. Get ready, because we're going to drop it. We're going to drop it. Yeah. We're playing ping pong out in the street. 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 We're playing ping pong and we're eating smoked meat. Excellent. We're playing ping pong in front of the house. House. A house. We're playing ping pong inside of your mouth. We're playing ping pong all over the place. Ping pong up in your face. Yo, 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 to our ping pong balls. Ping pong balls. What, what, one more time. Ping pong balls. Ping pong balls. Balls, 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 balls. Ping pong balls. Ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong balls. Ping pong balls, biot. Just a cool game and it's got no catch. The girls in South Korea blow it out this. So step back, mother. It's the ping pong song. And if you don't like it, take it in the ding dong. Wow, for schlang. Still relevant. Wow, still relevant. <laughs> I mean, I think, uh, no I don't, goodbye Eminem. Fuck yeah, you. Sorry, man. Right? You, had a, you had a good run. Snoop, hey, man. Yeah. We know you got your own uh, rosé now, but yeah, yeah. fist to the face. There's the a new boys are back in town. The new boy, the boys, are the ping pong <laughs> brothers. <laughs> wow. Um, so, uh, it's funny because we were up there doing stand up together. That, that's your hometown, as you mentioned. And, yep. and before we go, you know, we've been doing stand up so long. We, we still do it here in Hollywood. We see each other the all the time. And what's great is we get to watch each other's acts and we get to see guys try new bits. And is there, is there a bit that haunts you or it could have been something that's even recent, mm. Is there a stand-up comedy bit that you you conceived laying in bed one night or at the gym or whatever, and you go, oh, my God, the barbecue uh, fire starter thing. Uh, this is going to be great, and it could be anything, but is there a bit that, that you went up on stage and you thought it was a home run, and for whatever reason, it didn't click, and you go, okay, I'll try it three or four more times, and it never worked. It never really got off the ground, and you were bummed or you were confused because... 
it, it really, your com- comedy sensibility said to you, this, this is going to kill. Is there one that just never could get off the ground? Yes. Um, what is it? I want to hear it. Well, when I first started uh, stand-up in 2007, I started, somebody told me, you know, you got to have some jokes that are like personal things to help open you up to the audience and, yeah. and let them know who you are a little bit. Because I think right out of the gate, I was doing a lot of, observational stuff with no real emotional attachment, you know, dumb jokes about like, you know, NyQuil, you know, that, you know, that slogan's a little misleading, you know, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing stuff, he had fever so you can rest medicine. Yeah, you can rest after you hallucinate for 45 (laughs) minutes. I took two of those little matrix pills last night. I had a dream I was a cheetah running a daycare. And, uh, you know, and so I do stuff like that. Hang on. Good, good. Laughs. What was that? What was that? Fifteen years ago, and so um, no, that would get some good laughs. But there was no, it was nothing about you. Didn't know who I was. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, let me do some stuff. So I would do this joke. I'd come out. I go, man, uh, it's great to be here. Uh, this room feels a lot like my little league games because my dad's not here, and that would always get not what I wanted. I always just I thought it would get a great laugh and yeah. it would be a good opener. Never hit like I wanted it to. <sighs> and then I would double down. Yeah. And talk about my folks splitting up. I go, you know, a lot of kids think that they were the cause of the divorce, you know, and, um, which is just sad and shitty and, and, uh, and, you know, is the case about 85% of the time. But, but, uh, uh no, then I would say, you know, it's, it's never the kids fault. It's usually when you know, folks got bullshit going on, I go, uh, the fact that some, uh, parents say that it was because of the kids is, uh, insane to me. Like yeah. I've never heard of a dad being like, all right, look, look, Billy, here's how it's going to go down. Either you're going to get a B in social studies this year. Or I'm going to cheat on your mom. And like, Dad, well, you know social studies is my worst subject. Well, it looks like I better get some condoms. And that would uh, also not hit like I wanted to. This was 15 years yeah. ago. And I was like, oh. And so then that kind of put a, uh, and I would always do it. And I would rework different things that the dad would say that the kid thought, you know, for, for that, that was why the, uh, the it's a great cheated. premise. Yeah. Just like, you know, again, like it's not the kid's fault. So here's, yeah. I've never heard this happen because of, and this is what resulted in the divorce and the dad putting it on the kid. Yeah. The kid's the victim <clears throat> now, yes. which is, which is funny. Yeah. yeah. And I just couldn't find, huh. uh, a, um, you know, and I mean, I was performing in front of mostly widows. So I think that was, <laughs> I might've had something to do with it. Yeah, those funeral parlor gigs are really tough to get a giggle. They're t- they're a lot tough. of crying, and that, that crying. corpse is always in the corner of your eye. Yeah, and like in, smells. It, in the corner of its eye, because always like that, you know, the family was always like, we want to, you know, open yeah. casket, open eyes. Yeah, and, uh, open legs, open. too. Those are always hard. Can to, you imagine? When they on. do the showing and the <laughs> legs are open, just, so I went to Rod Stewart's funeral, spread eagled. Spread eagled with girls Calvin Klein jeans on. <laughs> yeah, and I don't even think he's dead. <laughs> I think he's still alive. There's a list of people that people think have passed on that are still yeah. clicking and ticking. Speaking of the Eagles, I just saw a headline today. I'm going to bring this up and get your take. At an Eagles concert during Take It Easy, a brawl broke out. <laughs> to take it easy. I saw that. Yeah. I thought that was one of the funniest headlines. Is that irony? Is that, is that, is yeah, that officially think, yes. irony? Yeah. Um, before I get into the Eagles thing, I want to say, you know, hearing you do your bit about your, your parents and the kid and everything. No, we'll go back to the Eagle thing, but I just wanted to comment on it that I visualize you, you know, I can pitch you up on the stage at the comedy store or whatever. And I'll be honest, like if it, if it was like a lumpy premise or it was kind of a stinker, I would say, yeah, I, I get why that didn't work, but I'm visualizing you doing it. I know your delivery. I yeah. know your cadence. And I'm surprised that one didn't work. But yeah. isn't that the, the majesty and the, the, the beauty of stand-up is you just, you never know. And that's what yeah. keeps it interesting and mysterious. And and there is a trial and error of like, there's no comedy course or rule book to follow of like, do a joke this many times. And then if it doesn't yeah. work, don't do it. Yeah. You just decide for yourself. And especially when you're early on, like I was in trying that joke, yeah. Maybe I didn't have enough, um, you know, uh, self-assuredness and trust in myself. Yeah, to that go, could be it to too. Keep trying it. Yeah. Or maybe I was just in a place where I decided if it doesn't work in the first few times, move on. Yeah. Or I, I also probably attribute that I was trying to write so much that it was like, ah, uh, well, it, just the fact that it wasn't hitting like I wanted to, I was like. Well, let me I'm more, let me put the uh, excitement that I had towards that towards something else. Yeah. So that I can just kind of keep this moving and not get fixated on something that's yeah. clearly not resonating. But you know, I think you get more uh, 
trusting in yourself as you get on and yeah. seasoned. Like I should try to dip back into that. Not only because it is still like a, uh, a big part of, of I think who I am and just yeah. stuff that I don't talk about enough. And I think there is something in that now to revisit that I might be able well, to. Well, what's rich it. about it too is it has a real deep emotional connection, whether someone's parents are divorced or not. We were all kids and kids were, are, are so sensitive to everything their parents do. And of right. course, a divorce is, is just something really paramount in a young child's life. So yeah. I, think, I think it's worth revisiting. And that's the other fun thing about stand-up comedy too. Sometimes you can, you can do a bit and 15 years later, it haunts you or you remember it and you go, you know what? It's 15 years later. Let me try it again. Yeah. And, and then suddenly you figured it out. Something, uh, you've gotten better or you've, you've found a new way to do it and, and you, you, you breathe new life into it. So, so maybe it is worth another chance. It's interesting that you asked me that question and immediately I thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. Is well, it? I knew there'd be something because we, oh, yeah. totally. we all have them. We all have them. Now, going back to the Eagles thing. Yeah. That, that is funny. Like a fight broke out during Take It Easy. That's yeah. like going to see Meatloaf and, uh, you know, somebody th- throws a, a casserole at the stage. Is that, is that the same thing? It's no. close, yeah. Yeah, I think it, it's, not um, really. It's like you go to, um, do you, maybe you go to, uh, again, Rod Stewart's funeral. Yeah. His, his legs the are legs. spread eagle. Yeah. And shares, what do you stink. believe in uh, love, love after life? Life oh, after love. Life after love. Yeah. So if it was love after life, yeah, and someone was going down on the corpse, maybe that and that's going down on the corpse, yeah, being love after life. So if I ever go to Cher's funeral, (laughs) someone's going to be going down on Cher. Do you believe in cunnilingus after life? (laughs) If somebody had like somehow put that into the uh, into the uh, the playlist, do you have funeral playlists? I would. Way. I don't want my funeral to be a dreary affair. No. And I don't I, want sad music. I want no. celebrate the time. Yeah. I, I always said that somebody should start a new company to revolutionize the funeral industry. Now like, that's what I call funeral music, volume 48. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like make it a party. Make it a celebration. Make it so everyone's not so sad. But those are stories for another day. Part two. Adam Ray, I think we, uh, we want to end on your uh, comedy story. And when you come back, we want to see if you were able to uh, Ooh, repurpose great. that whole uh, premise about the divorce thing. I love it. But before we go, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I got to give Adam laughs and applause. And uh, can we... Uh, can we ask Adam, uh, where, where can people see you? Mm. What are you doing? Tell us about any projects, your, 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 your television project in Australia. We want to know about your Instagram, your Twitter. Your, Adam has a wonderful, wonderful podcast as well. This is your moment. Let it rip, buddy. So when I was five. Okay, uh, and thank you very much. And, <laughs> no, if we could stick to... St- let's not repurpose that bit oh. here and now. You yeah. Know, when I get a little tongue tied on a <laughs> podcast, trying to close things out on a high note, and I feel my lips getting a little <laughs> buttery, it's time to uh-huh. loop them up with some oh, yeah. potato salad, hand job. Oh acetate. God, uh, Newman Zone. <laughs> you can find me at Newman Zone. <laughs> potato salad, hand. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, Adam Ray Comedy on Instagram and Twitter. The podcast about last night. Spotify, iTunes, YouTube. Harlan is a uh, legend, ALN guest, been on uh, double digits times, yeah. all of them crushed. The last one we reenacted, his famous scene from Dumb and Dumber. That clip is, uh, is oh, crushing yeah. it on the YouTube. Um, you can find uh, my tour dates at adamraycomedy.com. I'll be yeah. uh, in Boston, San Diego, Vegas, Kansas City, wow. um, and uh, and Detroit, and, um, and uh, North Carolina coming up. Wow. Young Rock, uh, season three, uh, comes out in November. Um, seasons one and two are on uh, Hulu and Peacock. Uh, Pam and Tommy, I played Jay Leno on that. You can check that out yeah. on Hulu. Um, and uh, there's a show I'm going to be on that comes out in October called Welcome to Chippendales, which will be on Hulu. I do not play one of the dancers. I play the MC on roller skates who warms up. The, okay. Uh, warms up the- Either way, we want to see it. We want to watch it. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I have a couple uh, YouTube specials that dropped uh, live from San Francisco at the Punchline and live from Madison. They're on my YouTube channel. Type in Adam Ray, Madison special, San Francisco special. Wow. Uh, a couple hours of great fun goofs and, yeah. uh, and queefs. And... Uh, 
And that's you that's should shoot now. one up in uh, Alaska at the Tatunga Blanks or whatever it's Charlie's, called. Yeah, yeah. At Coconut Chuck Charlie's. Cheese, yeah. Um, well, folks, uh, could have uh, had more fun having uh, Adam here, real treat. and uh, it was it was a real Always. treat, buddy. Thank we all. Me, me and Adam have been friends for a long time. We've yeah. toured together, we hang we out together, podcast together for strangers. Yeah, we've got we go to <laughs> movies, we go out. So it's it's great to have a, a good buddy here, and I hope you enjoyed Adam, and we'll certainly have him back if he behaves himself. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there's that queen. Fuck off. I'm almost done. Oh, God. On that note, thanks for being here on the Harland Highway. Until next time, be cool, don't queef, and chicken. Chow mein, baby. Mmm, <laughs> Zoa. Thanks, Rock. Guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you enjoyed that episode. It was a good one. A lot of laughs, a lot of tears, a lot of... Uh, stuff to uh to think about and chew on huh because that's what life's all about chewing on the good stuff nobody said that maybe denzel did maybe tom hanks did maybe they said it together in philadelphia the point is click subscribe right here on the aln logo so you can get more episodes and stay up to date when new content drops highlights animations clips it's all here for you baby i'll see you next time well i don't know how to blink